Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching, and I'd like to teach you how to use, uh, do the quadratic formula uh, with Python. Um, I am using, just for your information, 2.6 Python. I've been using 2.5 a lot. Um, uh, it's this, uh, for this program, you can use pretty much any of the Python code. So I'm just going to be importing a math function, and that's it. Uh, from the libraries. Let's see, uh, to start any Python program, um, I kind of like to set up uh, a nice definition of a main routine or a main function, basically. And so what I'm going to do is in my uh, new window, I made a new window here, and I've already saved it as Q form, quadratic formula. So let's go my main, that's just a name I'm deciding to choose, and I forgot when I save this, i got to save it as a dot .py. So I'm going to do a save as real quick and make it dot .py, and that way the color and everything will appear, which is definitely important to make sure that I've got the proper, proper way of writing this code out. Um, inside here I'm going to put the information for, or the, the code for doing the quadratic formula. I'm going to skip down a couple lines here and write my, I guess, boilerplate of way of Python running, the pro running any program goes if double underscore uh, oh yeah I think I got this right if double underscore name double underscore double equal quote double underscore main double underscore quote colon hmm, I think that's it it's been a while since I've wrote code so I have to remember how to do this and then I'm just going to call up that program my main and here we go so this is the basic, the basic way of Python doing any type of uh, um, uh, running of a program. This is a simple way to make a definition and a function and get it to work. Now let's put in a quick comment up top. Uh, this is my quadratic formula. And technically, we're going to be doing much more than quadratic formula. So we'll say, and more. Um, program. We'll put the word program up here. OK. Get started. First thing we've got to do is uh, coming from an ax squared plus bx plus c function or parabola or quadratic formula or quadratic, excuse me, quadratic equation. Um, we are going to need the a, b, and c. So let's go a, our variable a. I like to put a space here. You don't have to put a space. It just makes it easy on my eyes. Raw input. you got to put an underscore. Raw input. Okay, quote. Or excuse me, not quote. Um, parentheses. You need a single quote and it's asking for a prompt. So you can see Python is anticipating what you're doing here and showing you the rules of the game or what we're doing. And we're going to put a prompt in here. We're going to put a single quote and we're just asked a question. Let's try to uh, exercise our knowledge of this topic. And so what is the coefficient? I could just say what is A, but I'm trying to be a little more uh, I guess informative or um, uh, trying to make sure that we uh, are understanding the mathematics involved in all the little parts too. What is the coefficient of x squared? I'm going to do x caret 2 uh, just to use the idea of x squared, of x squared or the x squared term. Okay, of x squared, we'll do comma a so that we're asking for the a. In single quote, close parenthesis. Again, with Python, if you don't know this, you don't have to worry about semicolons and stuff like that. As long as it's indented, it will work nicely. So raw input, raw input. Another one, I should be copying and pasting. It'd probably save me a moment, and I'd make sure the syntax is correct. Never be afraid of doing copying and pasting tricks while doing this. So what is the coefficient? What is the coefficient? of the x term or linear term so of just x i'll be consistent here of x which is labeled b and we'll put a single quote close parentheses hit return and the same thing for c except it's not a coefficient so let's still do a raw input raw input single quote what is the constant what is the constant all right so now we've asked three prompts basically three uh, it's going to, in a lot of ways, it'll pull up a pop-up menu sometimes if you make this into an executable. So, or not a pop-up menu, excuse me, a pop-up window. And it'll ask you for these questions and it'll give you a little field to type it in. 
since we're doing this out of Python um, idle, uh, it'll actually appear over here on the shell. Questions will appear on the shell, I'll be able to answer them, and my answers will appear over here with a print command. So we're going to keep the shell up and running and visible, and we're going to be working off our little new window here. When Python asks for raw input, it is text to Python. Python does not see it as numbers, and so we're going to tell it to see it as numbers. We're going to say, hey, the A value, reassign it back into A value. So A is, this is a reassignment, uh, A is the float. Float is a, a command for making a, what they say up here in the you know, floating point number, as the pop-up window says. Uh, and the way I learned it 20 years ago in, my, in the original languages I've learned, um, it's basically making it a rational. So I used to call this the, the rationalizing part of it. It's basically making uh, any, any text, if it's a number, into the value of a rational. I could use integer here, uh, but just in case somebody feeds me uh, 2.3 or something like that, I want to have it a rational or a number that can be made into a ratio or fraction. So reassign a float a so this makes the text the computer sees it as text when it comes in and we let it know that that's actually the value of the number it appears and then the computer understand it as a value i'm going to copy i'm going to return i'm going to paste it twice and i've got my indents coming in accidentally here let me back those up okay and what i'm going to do is uh kind of what i hinted at first time i'm going to just change the letters here since i've typed it in once why bother typing it in again and when you got the syntax right i don't look at this as a lazy thing and please please don't it's a more of an accuracy thing accuracy thing i'm afraid of uh doing a, a typo or something like that all right let's do the quadratic formula we will assign the quadratic formula into the variable x and i have to use two variables so i'm going to use x1 with the plus or minus in the quadratic formula the negative b plus or minus the square root that part uh, it, it, that's two different instructions and in the, the reality is. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an x1 for the positive and an x2 for the negative. Uh, basic, kind of almost like spreadsheet math. If you've worked a spreadsheet before, this should seem a little familiar. It's just a little bit different in places. Um, when I do the, the quadratic formula, I like to divide by 2a in both front term and second term. So I'm going to do negative b, parentheses, divide by... 2 star a. If you're used to the TI-83 in your math class, you can do 2a and it'll work. CI-83 understands, the graphing calculators understand that that's multiplication. Here it does not. So I need to use the star. Also with the, oh, I forgot a divide sign there. Whoops, divide. Okay, and also you need to divide by both things as one item. And so you have to use the parentheses. It's an order of operations issue if you don't do that. Here we go. Plus math. Uh-oh, I forgot to import this math library. So although it's telling me in this pop-up window all the different things in the math library, I can do cosine and things like that, and you got degree change, exponent. What I'm looking for, and I'll just type it in, it's S Q, whoops, S Q R T, standing for square root. Okay, and that reminds me, I forgot to set up the math library and import it at the top. I will do that in a second. Let's finish off the quadratic formula at this part. We got b squared. Two stars stands for an exponent in Python language. So we got two stars for the exponent. So b, two stars, two, that's b squared, minus 4ac. Don't forget the stars. Don't forget the shift 8 asterisks so that it shows the uh, multiplication or it tells the computer that we are multiplying those values. Dividing by 2 times a again in a chunk, as I like to say to my students, so in a group, 2 times a. Now that reminds me, let's get back up here real quick. We've got to import a, a very important library. We only need one thing out of this library. But if we try to run this, it will go, I don't know what math is because it's an unfamiliar um, co or uh, um, call out basically for Python. So what we're going to do is Python has the ability to bring in tons of libraries, or at least many libraries that I can think of, and math is one of the ones that I use often, again, to use square root, and as we saw in that pop-up pop -up menu, several other items. Let's highlight this and copy it, because the quadratic formula is pretty much the same for x2. We just need a minus sign, just need a minus sign. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy, paste it, change it to x2, and we are almost done. Whoops, just passed it. 
need to make it a minus here, a minus. So now we've got plus or minus, plus the square root and minus the square root. All right, in programming, if you're not familiar with this, even though we've done a calculation and put it in a variable, everything that appears on a screen in programming, it has code behind it telling it, instructing the computer to display it to the screen. So right now, right, it just knows that as a, there's some variable and it's electronic memory as x1 and x2 that holds some numbers. We need to say print these or display it in a way to the screen. I'm just going to use a simple print command so that it just pops up back in, back over on my shell. Um, if I was doing this on a, um, uh, making this into a, uh, an executable, it'd be a, 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 a little bit more elaborate to get it to print to the screen or get the information to go to the screen. So let's see, print x1 comma x2. Well, we've got the basics of the quadratic formula. I'm going bringing in input a, b, and c. I have to turn them into numbers, rational numbers that is, and that's why I'm using the float commands. I run the qu equations, put it into variables, store it. Let's run a save, print it I mean at the end there. And let's run it. To run, right here in the Run menu, we can run the module. Over here, it's asking me, what is my A coefficient? Let's do one of my favorite difference of squares, x squared minus 4. So that's the coefficient 1 for x squared. There's no linear term. It's just x squared and then a minus 4. So you have to put in a 0 for the linear term, the B. Okay. And for the constant, that's a negative 4. If this works, we should get 2 and negative 2. So we have the quadratic formula working. This will give us x-intercepts. This will give us roots and zeros. Those are also called x basically x-intercepts. And if we set it equal to 0, this is the solution. Um, if you uh, come back for part 2, I'm going to take this and we're going to do as much as we can with a quadratic function. And we're going to be able to run this. Um, oh, excuse me. We're going to be able to run this uh, uh, and have it feed back tons of information. So in part two, I'm going to do the and more part. Let's just run this again to make sure it's working. Let's do run module, and I'm just going to make up one and see what happens. How about a 2x squared, a negative 6x, and how about a minus, oh, I don't know, 7 for the y-intercept or the constant in this function. Hit return. Look at those x-intercepts. They appear to be um, irrational, irrational there. So what we're doing here is we have, when we have a float, when we have a float, this is really kind of kicking out some decimals. So I might have been misleading when I say it's irrational. Um, and I'm starting to remember some programming from years ago. This turns it into a real number, which does include real numbers. Float turns it into a real number, not just rationals. It turns it into irrational numbers. I bet if I said print pi, it would probably print as much a pi as it could to another famous irrational number. Well, I'm David from Electro Teaching, and I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And come back for part two, and we'll do a little bit more. And thank you, and have a great day.